After his medical checkups, Commander Shepard is welcomed to the White House by President Kennedy and receives the Distinguished Service Medal of the National Space Agency. Thank you very much, Mr. President and Mr. Webb. I thought that last Friday was a thrilling day. Today even surpasses last Friday. And as a matter of fact, I got far less sleep last night than I did the night before the flight. <laughs> Thank you very much. But the medal ceremony didn't follow protocol. President Kennedy neglected to pin the medal on Commander Shepard, and Mrs. Kennedy comes through with a gentle reminder. The president quickly volunteers, I'll do my duty, and completes the formalities of the presentation. <laughs> Highlight of a hectic day is a parade up Pennsylvania Avenue. As an estimated half a million people cheer the man of the hour, New York wanted to extend its traditional ticker tape welcome also, but was turned down. After today's ceremonies, it's back to work for the astronaut. Commander Shepard said, today surpasses the day of the flight, as Washington extends one of its most spontaneous ovations in history. He adds, there are greater conquests ahead for the U.S. in space. But those conquests will owe their success to Commander Shepard, space pioneer. There's a family gathering at the White House as the president receives astronaut Walter M. Sherrard, Jr. and his family. It's a homey, relaxed meeting as Mrs. Sherrard, young Wally, and Suzanne swap small talk with the president as he discusses the nine-hour space flight with the father. Later, the commander told reporters that his flight proved that the Mercury spacecraft could be modified to fly 24-hour missions. It's a busy day for the Sherrard family. Well, there's still another stop in Washington before he returns to work. The children wait outside the Pentagon while Danny receives new honors. The two most excited children in the capital. Accompanied by Mrs. Shira, the commander is to receive an award from the Navy. In the office of the Secretary of the Navy, Fred Korth, he gets astronaut's wings and thus joins an exclusive but ever-widening circle of space explorers life of Mrs. Hattie Cooper, who awaits her son at the White House, the son who overnight became a national hero, Major Gordon Cooper. The astronaut has a warm reunion with his mother, the first since his 22-orbit flight. After roaring receptions and parades in Hawaii and at Cape Canaveral, the high-flying spaceman is to be sent back into orbit again by crowds here in Washington and in New York. In the White House Rose Garden, the President awards the Space Agency's Distinguished Service Medal. So, Major, we're glad to welcome you and your mother here, and your wife, your two children, and to tell you that uh, you've given the United States a, a great day and a great lift. I didn't really have much to say, and after that, all I can say is that it certainly is a great honor to be invited here and to be presented this award, and thank you all very much. President Kennedy awarded the Collier Trophy to the first seven astronauts. And I'm particularly glad that uh, the decision has made, been made to award the trophy uh, this year to them. I think it honors a extraordinary page in American history as well as in the history of flight, and uh, I hope that uh, this award, which in a sense closes out this particular phase of the space program, will be a stimulus to uh, them and to other astronauts who will carry our flag uh, to the moon and uh, perhaps even someday uh, beyond. So it's a great pleasure I present to them this celebrated award.